Good morning, welcome. Today we're working on my wife's 2016 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport. Not that it matters, it's 2016 Jeep Wrangler. Um, got a couple of issues. I'll show you the first one. If you can see that, we're at 36,063 miles. As you can see, our traction control light and our ABS light do not clear. This happened, um, it was about a week ago we noticed that. We're on our way home from doctor's appointment. And those lights came on on us. So I went and purchased the cheapest scan tool I could find. This Foxwell here that will read and clear ABS codes. So let's go through and I'll show you the code that we have. The brakes work fine. There's no issue with that. Uh, so I kind of had an idea what to expect when I hook this up. Just a moment, let me put the camera in. Alright, so hopefully you can see that. This is a Foxwell ABS and Airbag NT630 Plus. Um, I bought this online. I think it was like 80 or $90. It was the cheapest one I could find that would read a ABS code. You can go to your local parts store and they can check those codes for you for free. Um, depending on the parts store you go to, some may or may not clear the code for you, which they probably shouldn't because these are clear on their own if you fix the issue, usually. You just got to fix it and drive it and it usually clears. So let's hook this up and I'll show you the code I've got. So you hook this up to the OBD2 port. It's under the dash on the driver's side, right there. You can see that. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in. I then turn the key on. See that's powering up just from being plugged in. Put, oh, put the key in the ignition. Just turn it to the on position, but do not start it. if you can see the screen on this thing or not you might not be able to um, I'm just gonna hit auto VIN it's not touch screen oops so you just got these uh, arrows and whatnot I'm gonna hit auto VIN automatic VIN acquisition and verify that's correct In my case that is correct I will uh, blur that out so you can't see that information looks correct okay I'm gonna go to control modules press enter um, chassis ABS anti-lock brakes press enter and read codes Let's see we have a left rear wheel speed sensor circuit that is active and then stored we have system voltage low, battery voltage low. Okay, so our active code that tripped the ABS light is that left rear wheel speed sensor circuit. Um, so let me show you where that is on here. I already saved this so I'm going to go ahead and turn the key off. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I tried just clearing the code. Um, but it will not stay clear. It comes back instantly, so there's actually an issue. So the next, we move on to our left rear wheel. And I'll show you where the sensor is. Okay, if you can see that plug right there, it's on the back side of the axle. You can see that. See it right there? That is your uh, wheel speed sensor plug. And something else I noticed that's even more concerning to me, if you look right down there, you can see that. See where it looks wet? That's gear oil. Our axle seal is leaking on this wheel. Um, so I went through and I messed with the wiring on this because you can kind of see it's routed real tight to everything. has some tight bends to it. 
uh, messing with the wires didn't give me any changes in that code because obviously it could be a broken wire or something that causes this code uh, it could be the sensor itself but I went ahead and ordered parts so I can fix this axle seal and I ordered a sensor too once we get all part we'll see if anything looks wrong with that sensor and I think you can actually test the output of that sensor by spinning your wheel and using a multimeter and see what kind of reading you get um, but yeah we're going to do this axle seal, which we had to pull the axle, um, remove the bearing, we'll put a new bearing back on, put a new seal, put a new seal back on, put the new bearing back on, put the axle back, and in that process we will look at this wheel speed sensor, and we will see what we can do to get this thing fixed. Let's go ahead and get started. It's going to be a fun job. And like I said, it's 2016. We're at what did I say, 36,000 miles on it. That's not an issue we should have. Alright, I'm going to apologize now for the lighting. All I have is this little Milwaukee battery powered uh, work light. Great for me, but not so great for you guys trying to watch a video. I'm going to go ahead and grab the jack. We're going to get this thing jacked up on jack stands, and then we'll go ahead and pull this tire off and start taking stuff apart. Be right back. Alright, let's see if I can get a jack stand under there now. I think that'll work. Nice and slow. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the other side too, so that later on if I need to spin the wheels or something, I have that ability. Uh, and also, a little tip that I read about doing the uh, axle bearing and, and whatnot, since we're pulling this side out, you want just a slight tilt down towards the right hand side so you don't have a bunch of oil run out the uh, the uh, axle on this side when you go to pull it out. It'll drain it back to the pumpkin or differential, whatever you want to call it. All right, let's put the cardboard back down. Hey, if any of you guys have a recommendation for a microphone that'll work with this GoPro Hero 5, um, that would be great. I know its audio quality isn't the best, especially when I'm moving around and stuff. So if you know of an external mic that would work good with this, let me know. Throw it in the comments below, please. Alright, so here's my Harbor Freight um, electric impact. My wife bought this for me while we were in college. Uh, probably like seven years ago, I would guess. It's been great. It has a lot of power. Uh, the only issue I've ever had with it is right where this cord goes into the housing. It had a wire that was pinched, and so it, it broke and didn't work anymore, so I took it apart. Fixed that connection. Uh, been using it ever since. Now let's go to the Harbor Freight Electric. The only thing with this is it's got that, I don't know, that hog ring, whatever, retainer on there. It doesn't really work well with these sockets. But it is a small problem to have when you get this much power for this cheap. So I think at the time it was only like $35 or $40, I think. And it works really, really well. Alright, um, now we're going to have to get that caliper off so we can remove the rotor. See what we need for that. There. This guy right here is the first one. See that guy right there? That's the first one we're going to do. Running out of plate. trying to do this where you can see everything, but I can't promise it's going to be the case. Oh, that 
that sucks. That freaking sway bar in link here is gonna be right in the way. We might have to remove that guy to get it out of our way. That sucker is tight. Really? There we go. Uh, little tip probably would have helped if I would have lubricated the threads on this before I did this. Okay. All right, now I got that sway bar and link out of the way. Just split it up there out of the way for now. Going to put the nut back on the bolt so we don't lose it. Put that up here. Now I think we've got room to get on there and impact that off of there. I hope. At least you'll be able to get a wrench on it. Yeah, it looks like we're just gonna be able to put a wrench on it, which that's all right. That is better than nothing. Probably gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna use the jack handle as a cheater. Break a bar would work as well. To be honest with you, I don't think I own a breaker bar. I always just use cheaters on stuff. I buy one. Yes, dear. Hi, Trenton. He had to work hard for that one. He what? He had to work hard for that one. What? Got our two caliper bolts out. Alright. Alright. our sway bar and link. We took that lower bolt out so we can get it out of the way. Now we can remove the caliper. Brake pads look really good. They should for 36,000 miles. And I'm going to set that up out of the way there so it can't get damaged. Probably be a good idea to take a piece of wire and wire that up so you can't knock it off there. You don't want to jerk on your brake hose or anything. Alright, I'm back. I can tell you now, I regret doing this on this side of the garage. Because every time I need something else, I have to walk over to my side of the garage and grab it. Tool-wise, that is, because I keep all my tools on one side of the garage. And then the part of the garage that she parks in. It's just for her vehicle. Uh, we have some kids' toys in here. I got my mower and motorcycle. That's all on this side of the garage. And all my tools are over on the side I park my truck in. So you grab some pliers and pull those off of there. I think it's really easy thing to do, just bend each one of these little tabs up a little bit so it's not catching the threads. And I can pull the whole thing off and not fight it. Like that, that was much easier. If you can see what I did there, I just bent all those tabs out a little bit. Let me pull that right off of there. Thank you. 
go. Look at that. Oh, all right, so let me show you what I did there, because that freaking sucked. Holy cow, did that suck. So what just worked for me, uh, maybe if we can see. You see this tab right here? You see how this is cut out? This dust shield is cut out right here. So there's this tab. There's this tab. There's the cutout in this dust shield. I took my two by four, turned it like this, placed it against that tab, and against the rotor here, the rotor there, and just pried. That's able to get that to break loose. If I would have seen that a lot sooner, it probably would have saved me quite a bit of time. Um, I'll cut out most of the time I spent trying to get that rotor loose, just so you guys can can see that. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Use two by four off of this tab here, pry on this rotor. Make sure you spin this rotor, tap it a few times, try to break any rust loose that you can, then pry on it. And it comes right off of there. That would have saved me quite a bit of time if I had known that. I bet somebody else has done that before and there's probably a video on it. I should have researched this before I started, huh? Oh well. Let's, and learn. Let's get this back off of here. Okay. You can see in there, see how oil covered that um, wheel speed sensor right here is? That's what. That piece right there I'm touching, that's the wheel speed sensor, how covered in oil that is. That's probably our whole issue is this, this axle seal started leaking and they got that thing coated in oil is why it's not working. Because nothing that I sprayed We'll get back into here. As you can see, it's not wet at all on the back side from me spraying. That is all oil from the differential. You have your, so I'm gonna clean it up. It's easy to change. It looks like there's one bolt back here. You can see here, here's our clip, our plug for it, and right below that is that little bolt, and that just pulls out of there. All right, so let's go ahead and drain the differential. And then we'll get to where we can get this axle pulled out. There are four bolts on the back side of this. You see one here, one here, and two on the other side, the front side of the axle. You remove these four bolts and you pull the axle out. All right, next we're gonna take the differential cover off of there. Uh, it looks like a 13 millimeter bolt. I'm just gonna use the air impact on this, run those out, because they shouldn't be very tight. Bottom ones first. It's off to the side. I'm just gonna loosen these two up a bit, and then we'll grab something and part open that. Uh, we'll grab something and part open the bottom. So we can start draining out. Oh. Huh. You don't even need to pull the cover to drain it. That's nice, actually. Differential's got a drain plug. You can see that on the passenger side of the differential. There's a drain plug right there. Can't tell if that's 3 8 or... I think it's a 3 8 ratchet. You can stick an extension in there or something and get that plug out and drain it before you pull this cover off. So let me do that first. I'm gonna drain it out there and don't pull the cover off. I'm used to old trucks where the only way to cover was, or the only way to drain it was to pull the cover loose. All right, so it's a three eighths. Drive plug. Just gonna put a, th a half inch to three eighths adapter on this air impact. Put that in there so we can get that out. like it. Oh, that is gross looking. A little bit there looked like it had metal on it. Oh yeah, there's metal all over this plug. Oh my gosh. Spread that out.
That is a lot of metal. Alright, that's been draining for a little while now. It's still draining. It's not done yet, but most of the oil's out. I'm gonna go ahead and uh I'm gonna go ahead and get that cover off of there. Taking out these two bolts and pull that cover off of there. I think we have to put it in neutral so we can spin that. I believe. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm about to do here. Um, we're gonna remove this plug for the uh, wheel speed sensor. There we go, it's just dirty. Probably should take in some like electrical contact cleaner or something. Hose that down real good. There we go. Yeah, I'll clean that up really good before we put that back together. Just dirt in it. Once you pull this tab out, it kind of unclips this for you. Then you can pull that off of there. Let it hang out of the way. Then we got the single bolt here. If you can see that, we'll take out. It's pretty small. Let's see what size that is. Not bad, it's eight millimeter. Oh. Got this little guy out. Now I think that sensor should wiggle out of there. Yep, and it is just coated in oil. I think it might clean up and work, but I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it. Not 100% sure, 100% sure on that. But yeah, that's it. That's what caused our ABS light to come on and our traction control to stop working. That, well, not this. This didn't cause it. The oil on this caused that, but the oil came from that axle seal leaking. So I'm going to set that aside where I won't lose it. Just right down here below it. Now we'll get these four, four nuts off of here, and we'll work on getting this axle pulled out. So I'm going to put my wrench on here. I'm going to use this 2x4 for some persuasion. The original impact wrench. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this stuff because it's covered in dirt. come off there just a little bit easier. Same thing, put the wrench on there, I'll use this 2x4. A breaker bar and a socket would be ideal. So 
the front of the axle, I was able to use a ratcheting wrench on the back side of the axle. It won't fit on there. Just need to get in that differential and pry on it a little bit. Get that thing moving, the axle should pull right out of there. All right, well, I just realized I wasn't recording when I did that. Um, the axle was sticking out of this pinion gear right here a little bit. And I took this little pry bar in here <clears throat> and I just give it just a little bit of a pry. It didn't take much pressure at all. And careful not to pry on your gears. You don't want to pry on your gears. Just a little bit of pressure on that, in the center of that axle and it just popped loose. I'm sorry I missed that on camera, but I don't plan on pushing it back in to pry it back out for you. <laughs> sorry. All right, it should just pull out of there now. Hopefully we don't spill too much oil. It's been draining for a while and it's slightly pitched back to the differential. So there shouldn't be a whole lot of oil left in that axle tube, but we'll see. I'm sure there's some residual. All right, now it's out where you can see. There is your wheel bearing. Um, there's a spacer there. There's a race inside that axle tube that we'll replace. All right. Now we've got our axle out. I'm gonna set it down gently. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is take a die grinder and cut off this um, wheel bearing retainer. I tried using the chisel to get it, get it worked loose and knocked off of there. It doesn't have to go very far before it should loosen up, but I can't get it to budge. There's not a whole lot of space in here to work and I don't wanna damage the axle. So I'm going to notch and cut this retainer off and I'll probably do the same thing to the wheel bearing. We'll get that out of there. And then we'll clean all this up, and it'll be prepped for the new bearing, which is supposed to come tomorrow. And you have to press this back on, so you have to have access to a press to do this. Um, but it should go pretty smooth, I think. So let me go get the die grinder, and we'll start cutting on this. Just take your time, go slow, you don't... Alright, it is moving now. There you go. As you can see, well, it, it split when I had the chisel, but I didn't cut all the way through it. Maybe you can't see. I got very close to cutting all the way through it, but I didn't cut all the way through it. I just split that last little bit with the chisel. So the cage is off. Now we gotta get this bearing cut off without damaging the axle and without damaging this retainer. You can buy these if you need to, but I'd prefer not to. And that seal is right behind it. So we're gonna go ahead and start cutting on this bearing and see if we can get to split.
Now that it started to split, I'm gonna put my chisel against that lip of the bearing and see if I can drive it off. Looks like it's working. Alright, now that I'm out away from where the from where the uh, bearing sits on the axle, I'm gonna go ahead and try cutting this a little bit more because I have some more space to work with. There you go. Now you can take the seal off. This is our seal that failed and started leaking on us. That's why we had, uh, this is what causes to have oil on our wheel speed sensor. And then if you look in here, we still gotta get this race out of here, which feels like it's gonna come out already. That would be amazing if you don't have to use a tool to get that out. Okay, I might have to work on that just a little bit. The trick is to get it to all pull out evenly. Look at that. That's awesome. Comment below if you ever had one come out that easy. So that's it. Now we just got to clean everything up and we'll be ready for uh, install tomorrow when I'm ready for the rest of my parts.